All right, everyone. Uh, today's video is not going to be edited. Uh, I'm going to do a little bit of an Alistair Gold type of a show where I just talk to the camera and yeah, explain why it's been a little bit since I've been making some videos and then also get into the cup final, talk about that a little bit. I want to talk about Enik and Levy and then kind of the existential question, I think, uh, has been on my mind for Tottenham Hotspur Football Club. So first, a little personal update. Um, yeah, it's been a rough couple of weeks for my family. My wife got very sick um, and we were actually in an urgent care on the morning of the cup final. So I did not get to uh, watch the first half. I was going to say enjoy the first half, but I, I heard um, nobody really seemed to enjoy that first half and we kind of escaped it. <clears throat> and then I was on uh, dad duty for the second half, so didn't really get to um, fully take all of it in. But I did get to watch the second half, and yeah, I think to to put that game in terms of how I felt about it, even just seeing the second half, I felt like I felt like Spurs, and I don't mean the players necessarily, although we'll talk about one player in particular, I felt like the club gave up on that cup final uh, before we even played it. You know, we, we talked about the Super League and the, you know, the decision to fire Jose before the cup final. And, you know, you, you start to have like Cinderella, you know, types of thoughts about this cup final like you know Ryan Mason he won his first game against Southampton maybe he could you know pull off some sort of amazing upset Harry Kane came back um he this was not as I, I did not feel very nervous <clears throat> after seeing him play for a, a bit that you know he wasn't gone for nearly as long as the last time with that Champions League final and so he, he looked ready to play but I felt like I felt like this was inevitable, that the the way that they played, um, you know, kind of hoping against hope, you know, Hoiberg had that moment, and then he dished it off to where he thought Regulon was going to be, and Regulon was not there, and that was really the only chance I thought we might have, um, and it was just so disappointing, and it felt like other cup finals we've watched where Spurs go scoreless. And so I just wanted to pull up a couple bookmarked tweets that I've been thinking through and just talk about some of those things with you. We'll talk about the cup final, talk about uh, Enik and Levy, and then, like I said, that that one existential question. So let's, let's talk about this first one here. Um, Mark asks the question what you know where do Tottenham Hotspur as a football club go from here does anyone know and Aaron responds tough one the lads need a sit down with someone smarter than us to discuss the past two years hash out the psychological psychological stuff sell those whose names we shall not speak sign a few players with extra grit and fight bring in a manager who can both man manage and properly strategize. And I, I have to agree uh, with what Aaron is saying here because I think I think there is a psychological element. There seems to be uh, this almost nearly men narrative that has been around Spurs for a good bit of time. And I think <clears throat> there is an aspect of it that feels like we've accepted it. Um, like maybe that's what we're okay with. We're okay with um, getting close, but not crossing that finish line first. Um, we're okay with having the best, arguably the best striker in the world, winning golden boots for club and country. But, you know, I had hoped that Sonny, you know, he had that interview before the cup final saying, Dude, I don't care about playing in this game. It's about winning this game. It's not, there's nothing to celebrate about getting to a final. I loved hearing that from him because I felt like that is how I feel now. I feel like as a Spurs 
fan coming through, you know, I, I, I've been a fan for about 10 years now, right? So, so having AVB and then Sherwood and then Potch coming in, like Potch changed the, the way I feel about this club. Like we could dare to dream. And then we never did anything with those dreams. But then, you know, I don't know if you saw this, but there was this moment in the game. I, I saw it and I was so disappointed where you see this ball come in and look at Sonny. Sonny just kind of trots back. He, he just kind of stands there as the ball, you know, comes near to him. And I don't, I don't know what that is. I don't know what I'm looking at there. I don't know if I'm looking at a defeated man psychologically. I don't know if I'm looking at a man who's just so exhausted from playing so many games. Spurs have played more games than than any other club um, because we had to play into Europa and all those things. But that, I saw that moment and I remember just going, we're done. It's over. We are defeated of heart. We are not even defeated yet in the game. And so I agree. I agree with the tweet of Aaron. I think, you know, my, my dad is a, uh, is a retired psychologist my, and, and I, it, it matters, man. Like your mentals going into a game matter and what you believe about yourself, what you believe about your, your squad, your, your teammates, uh, what you believe about your club. I think even our best players are having doubts. And you can't go into a club, uh, cup final with doubts. So I, I think that would be huge to, to tr try to get these players, I don't know if it's this summer or what, to, to work through some of the, the psychological stuff behind the, the game and learn how to process being so close and, and not tasting victory. I mean, you heard it in Eric Dyer's interview as well. The guy was almost in tears talking about how many cup finals he's been a part of over seven years and never tasting victory once. And I think that does mess with your, your nerves going into a match. So anyway, um, so that was Sunday afternoon. I, I did personally get a little bit of, of joy by the end of the evening. Some of you know I am a, a shareholder of Detroit City Football Club and and Detroit City won the the Nisa Legends Cup there, uh, and so at least got to see some celebrations. But man, I was hoping to see some double celebrations from both Spurs and City, Detroit City. But the thing is, is like, how could I? How could I even have that expectation? I, I did. I, I really did. I went to bed on Saturday. And I just was nervous, excited, thinking, man, what could happen? What could be? But why? We fired Jose Mourinho six days prior. We brought in a manager that that has never had a, a senior management, I mean, one game in the Prem. And he's going right into a cup final. They showed that stupid graphic of Pep and and him and uh, you know how many games they had managed and won, yada yada. And it just I something has changed for me in my relationship to Tottenham Hotspur Football Club. And part of it has to do with the Super League, but the other part of it has to do with Jose Mourinho. And I know, you know, I'm not local, right? Like I'm, I'm over here in the great state of Michigan watching from the United States. I'm used to watching um, sports leagues like the NFL, the NBA, the Major League Baseball, MLS, you know, like that, that no promotion relegation. Like I understand what it is. I, I feel like I was trying to give the benefit of the doubt to, to Spurs and to the board, um, because you, you you can't not be a part of that, right? Like if that's gonna happen, and it's, it sounds like it's still like somewhere on the back burner, you can't not be a part of that. Um, if you get an invitation, you don't say no. The money that would have uh, been coming our way, right? All those different things. But I think that's the issue: is that I don't believe 
anymore. That it's not just money. Um, and I, I know there, there's there's some people that have been making some, I would say, decent arguments on both sides of, of the Enoch uh, and Levy in and out uh, camps. And so I just want to go through a couple of those and share a little bit of my opinion about it. Um, and I would love to hear your comments too, because I know people are, you know, pretty strongly opinionated about it. And, um, but, but I, I think there's some things to keep in mind and, and I'll share my opinion as we go. So here's one, uh, from that, uh, Mark as well on Twitter saying, you know, 500 days, no signings left Poch in a mess. Didn't back him, sacked him, hired Mourinho, Failed to sort the squad mess. I, I I don't know if it's failed to sort, but certainly did not get rid of the Deadwood. Sacked Mourinho before a cup final, which is what he was brought in for. And that's the truth. Like, who, who can deny that? That's what we brought Jose in for, was to win cup finals. And here we are in a cup final, and you sack him six days before. Now we're looking for this potch-like manager. First choice not hambling, happening, shambles at the top so that's obviously one person's opinion but but i think there is something there that 500 days with no signings we went january summer january with no signings potch talked about that painful rebuild right um we saw the the issues you know potch uh in the league was not winning any games from i I think i think it was like uh february until he got uh let go he only won four games or something like that and that was kind of papered over with the Champions League final. But that's what's so crazy about, about Tottenham Hotspur Football Club. Like, we've been in finals. We have been in finals. But we're not winning them. I want to pull this one up here because I feel like this is a helpful um, reminder. So uh, CA here has said, you know, Tottenham, the almost men, But there are so many factors as to why. The Messiah Potch couldn't win anything. Does Levy take the blame? Under Enoch, or Enoch, I'm not sure how you say it over there, Enoch over here, League Cup Finals. You got 0102, 78, 89, 14, 15, 20, 21. Those are finals. You got FA Cup five times semifinal, I think in a row. UEFA Champions League, last eight. You have the... uh, the final in 1920, and then uh, Premier League runner-up in 1617. So, close but not quite. And who takes the blame for that? I think that's the real question. And I'll, I'll give you my answer in just a little bit. So, so I'm trying to give you know both sides of this. Like, yes, under Levy, we didn't make any signings. We didn't kind of keep up with the times. We didn't make any transfers, get rid of the dead wood in this last year, right? We we still got we're still holding on to Danny Rose's contract. We're we're watching Christian Eriksen's contract run down. Yan Vertongen, Michelle Vorm, right? Like all these contract issues um for Spurs. Um you look at gross spending in the last five years. Um, Simon, you know, kind of pointing this out and I think it might be better to, to, uh, show it this way. You know, you got Man City and you got us down here. You know, you just look at the spending and you're like, why did we expect to win a cup final when the spending disparity is like that? This is gross transfer spend in the last five years is just not even close it's not it's not even close when you look at the cost of squads this was this was another you know way of looking at cost of squads you look at manchester city up at the top nearing a billion united chelsea woolwich liverpool everton are three million ahead of us we just don't spend like other clubs spend. And, and, and this, this is why I think it ties to the, the Super League because 
This is why Man City and Chelsea don't need the Super League. They, they just don't need it. They don't need the money. They don't need to balance budgets. No, no, there's no need to balance those things. They can, they're just going to spend. And so when you have someone like Tottenham trying to compete, personally, it doesn't feel like a merit-based system. It seems like a money-based system. Now, there's merit, I would say, in the relegation battle. There's probably a good bit of merit when you start looking at the leagues below the Prem. But you start getting into that top seven spots of the Premier League. That's not merit. That's money. That's money. Look, look at the number, or the, yeah, the number of teams that have won the Prem. It's so small. Man United, Man City, Chelsea, Arsenal, Liverpool finally won it once. And we have yet to. That's money. Teams with money. Now you can say Leicester did their thing. But I said this on the, the, the last stream I did, that Leicester are like the, they're like when, when your local news shows the lottery ticket winner. You know how many people, many people lost, didn't win that lottery? But this is the guy who won. It was so weird that they won. And yes, we. it feels like we should have won that year. But they won. Against the odds. And even if we won, it would have been against the odds. Do you, do you understand what I'm saying? It's not merit. It's money. Money being spent in ways that no one else can compete. And I thought that's what this, this was about. It was competition. And Spurs have been punching above their weight for so long with Pochettino. But just can't get it over the line. And that's where you could, I think you could blame Levy and say, dude, if you would spend just a smidgen more, we get Bruno Fernandes. If you would spend just a, a smidgen more. But we don't. And so I can see the frustration on both sides. I can see why you would say, hey, Anik has, has gotten us to a place where, where we weren't before. You know, there's one here. I think uh, this is this is a really helpful way of looking at it as well. Koi's 100. You know, people seem to think I'm part of this Levy family or will unconditionally support them. But over 20 years, breaking down the big picture, here's, here's what they say. Infrastructure and commercial. There's simply no more that Enid could have done in 20 years. Now, you might say, I don't care about that. I care about what's on the pitch. We'll get there. But it's true. The training facility, the stadium, commercially, the revenue, right? Competing in second or third. It's incredible that we've been able to achieve that. Um, and if it was a fair system, wow, well done. If that's what we were being judged on, wow, well done. Next, recruitment and academy. Obviously, been hit and miss with players and managers, but you have to give credit for building the Pochettino team. Also, critique the very poor buys, the investing, crucial moments, academy. And you can see what his marks are. I I'm not going to speak to those. League performance. Considering we were mid-table and worse for 10 years in the 90s, all around the improvement, all around the, the improvement has been good. 11 consecutive top six finish finishes and six top four finishes with a couple of title challenges thrown in. couple title, one maybe. Overall, gives, gives their mark. Trophies, obviously hugely disappointing for 20 years. They get to finals. You, you would expect them to win more cups, and they just haven't. And so their conclusion is shared here, and you can read some of that for yourself. I, I think that's a good point. When you compare the Spurs of you know, you know, 2000, to 2010, 2010, 2020, and 90, whatever, 92, to 2000, we are improving. But we're just not getting it across that line. Like I saw this, you know, Spurs are still sending their stuff to buy their crap. And, and I've, I feel like I'm done. I feel like I'm done buying stuff. I, I, I love this club. And that's how I get to support, right? As, as a, a foreign fan, I support through the shop. 
And they even say as much when you buy things, you know, like you are directly supporting the club. And, and I just, I feel like it's, it's not fair to say that anymore. Um, I saw the shirt on there uh, the other day. And uh, that's what it feels like at Spurs right now. It's like SP dropping down and you are, and now you're S. Like we're, we're, we're down here right now. And that shirt went from $125, but the value of that shirt is only $63 right now. Um, and that's how it feels like the value of Spurs has gone. And, you know, we're talking about managers coming in and all that stuff. It's, it's tough. Um, I'm not going to get into that today. I don't, I don't even know what to say about that until we have an understanding of our direction and who we are. And so... So let me just speak for myself. I feel like I can understand when you look at the the trajectory of the club overall. Yes, we're on a down, but we've been up. We're, we're, we're definitely in a better place than we were in the 90s. We're definitely in a better place than we were 10 years ago. Financially, as a, as a business, we are in a better place. But to dare is to do... And nothing's being done on the pitch. We're playing games and we're getting higher. But the accomplishment, like the final, the final never gets won. And when I think of Daniel Levy and, and him calling himself a custodian of the club, Firing Jose Mourinho six days before the cup final, the reason why you brought him in, that broke, I think that broke my trust. It made me think if it's finances or glory, finances win. When, when the two are at odds with each other, meaning I'm sure, I'm sure Jose was going to have a significant bonus if he won that cup. A significant bonus. And I heard that there were some things about where he was in the table, right? If he was in top four versus top six versus below the top six, they might not have to pay him out as much. I don't know. Those are rumors. But I would imagine Levy structuring a contract that way. And I imagine him structuring a contract heavily, you know, bonus driven. It seems like he does that with Harry Kane, Youngman Son, Christian Eriksen. That's how he keeps these guys is, hey, you perform, you get paid just like everyone else, but you got to perform. And, and I feel like that's fair. Well done, Levy. But dude, pay up. Give him a chance to win that freaking final and pay. I mean, I'm not a Jose stand by any means. But this was what you brought the guy in for. And now you're going to kick kick him to the curb. I mean, with $15 million or whatever you took with him. You're not kicking him to the curb financially but you know what i'm saying you're 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 getting rid of him for the very thing you brought him in for and um and it kind of breaks my heart about spurs um now i had an emotional week with what was going on with my uh my family and stuff but you know i had this belief about who spurs are and i think i think of our club as like not Chelsea, not Manchester City, not not just throwing money at things, but like kind of playing by the same rules as the lower clubs. Like we 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 fight with the big clubs, but we play by the same rules as the little clubs. We, we're trying to balance our budget. We're we're not going to spend hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars closing in on billions of dollars on players. We're we're going to try to develop them through the academy, just like everyone else. And and we're going to use the resources to invest in the team. And it feels like merit based football. But I think it really is money based football. And Levy knows he can't compete. So he's going to just make that money. Um, and maybe it will be spent on the players and and the manager. and But maybe not. Like maybe it's just to look good for, for Enoch and for Levy. And so it disappoints me because when I think of the Premier League, I think now instead of a merit-based system and I... 
and I know the the Super League was was running from that. I I, I don't think the Super League is a merit based system, but I'm not sure if the top of the prem is a merit based system. It reminds me most of those freaking mobile games on your phone, right? Where you buy gems, and it's like, dude, you could be the best whatever player on that mobile game, but then there's you know Daniel Levy over here. You know, playing like he's got the money, but he's not buying the gems. And then you got Manchester City over here just buying gems after gems after gems, stacking his squad. It doesn't matter how good you play because they're bringing in those players. And um, and we're not buying gems. So, So this is the existential question that was asked on Twitter. And I don't know how I don't know how to answer it myself, but this is the question, existential question from Spooky. Is would you welcome Spurs getting doped up, smashing the wage structure like a city or Chelsea and winning things? Theoretically, because that opportunity has passed, which it has. I mean, we're worth so much now. You'd need a freaking Elon Musk, which you know, I tweeted at him. I told him, "Hey, I don't know if you're in the business." of like buying gems for a, a a football team, but we could use someone buying gems. But he says, you know, is, or is, I don't know, he or she, is the essence of this the same energy as pro ESL or can Spurs compete without going that far? And I think the answer is no. I don't think we can compete at least regularly without going that far. I think that's the issue. And you brought these types of owners in and you can blame the american owners for wanting the esl like i i can understand why you're blaming them for wanting it because they want it because they're starting to look at the way that their revenues are and and they're not making money and they got to keep spending money to keep up with the manchester cities but they can't keep up with the manchester cities because manchester city doesn't care about buying gems dude they're just smashing that button every week It's just, I don't think it's fair. I think it's money-based. And so you can see why when Newcastle is is potentially getting some new owners, they're like, whoa, 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 whoa. Not like these other owners where they can just spend gobs of money because that wouldn't be fair. But it already isn't. It already isn't. So (laughs) the last thing I'll, I'll say is I think some people would be like Harry Kane in this little video uh, if we were to be bought by one of those types. I don't know if you saw this video of Harry Kane. It makes me very uncomfortable. I don't know what he's doing. I don't know why he's doing it. But um, it is... Some people would be excited if we were bought by, you know, a big money-spending type of human... I don't know how I would feel. I, I feel that's why I, that's part of the reason why I love this club is because we play by little guy rules. You know, we balance our budgets. We keep the infrastructure. I liked that. And but now I'm like, dude, what am I what am I dreaming about? Why am I dreaming? So that's how I feel. I, I just feel A little sad. I feel a little um, disappointed. I feel a little disillusioned with with my club. And you know, I saw the stuff about the protests and people going out, and, and I don't know if that'll work or not, right? Like, because I think there's a lot of people that really are happy with what Enoch is doing, and who's gonna pony up and and pay all that? I mean, what we're worth? We're in the top top 10 um, clubs in the world for value. Who's going to just show up and buy number 10? I don't know. It's got to be a really wealthy person and or group. And that group may not be any better. So yeah, I think I'm just bummed about it. And I want to go back to enjoying watching my team. I want to go back to the days where we were dreaming and daring. And I think it's it's about my expectations. You know? Getting my expectations right about this club. Because um, it doesn't... 
maybe that's the other sad part of it. It doesn't feel like mine either. It doesn't feel like mine, like my club. It's, it is Levy's club and I support that club. And it makes me sad. You know, I'm reading a little bit of that biography about how this was started by a group of middle school boys, you know? And I bet they did not expect all the things we would accomplish. But I also don't think they would have expected what we've become. So, yeah, I'm a little down about it. I'm really hoping that we can show some grit by the end of the season i'm hoping we'll bring in a, a a manager that is looking for a project and you know i don't know if daniel levy is planning on still being daniel levy and or if he thinks you know hey fans start coming back we're going to start spending that money again or or what we've got lots of hopes with dane scarlet divine so there, there's some hope and excitement and I hope Dane Scarlett gets to play next season. I, like Jose was was talking about playing him, and I'm I'm excited for that. Like that's what this is about. He's one of our own. Like we 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 need to support that kid, get behind him. Oliver Skip's coming home, right? I mean, there's some things to look forward to in the next season, but I think it's going to take some time before I'm singing again in my living room. You know. And I, I do still sing. I was singing um, as I watched the second half with my boy. I was I was feeding him and uh, you know teaching him the songs. Like just I I want yeah I want to look at the future of this club and be excited. And I don't feel it. I just feel like it's kind of blah. And that makes me sad. So hopefully, uh, I would love to hear your thoughts. Hopefully you'll jump, jump in in the comments and, and tell me what you think. Um, because even though it doesn't feel sometimes like our club, it is our club. It's the one we love. Um, it's the one we support through thick and thin. And we're going to be here when, when Enik isn't here anymore. And our club is, is still going to have, you know, Harry King out here doing these kinds of videos. Like, I don't know why he's doing these kinds of videos, but, uh, but he's doing them. And uh, and I will always support Harry Kane. And and uh, and hopefully he doesn't hand in a transfer. I, I, I doubt that he will. I think he loves this club so much. But yeah. I feel like we just got to wait and see a little bit. See who we bring in as a manager. See what happens with Sonny's contract. And uh, readjust our expectations for for what it means to follow, uh, follow Spurs. But I'm here. I'm still going to do it. And uh, like I said at the beginning, I'm sorry for, for the delay of making the video. Uh, I just had to deal with some things as a family. But uh, but yeah, we're still here singing. So as I like to say, sorry this was a little bit longer. Usually I'll edit it down doing that little Alistair Gold uh, type of thing. He has his own sign-off, but my sign-off is, as ever, it was great talking with you.